Hello and welcome and good evening or good night or good morning or whatever time of day it is. Good evening, good morning, good night. Right, quickly, also wanted to show you here quickly. Uh, I've just uh, updated the software or the firmware for the uh, flight controller in the H520. There was an update came out today to fix a small glitch with uh, data connection loss problems. It was nothing major. It was just uh, whenever the unique H520 was channel hopping frequencies uh, to the ST16S, that wee tiny 0 0.000001 of a millisecond was enough to trigger uh, a data connection loss problem. It was just a wee glitch in the firmware and uh, hopefully that this uh, wee small update has uh, now rectified that. So now that I've done that, basically uh, you're advised now to do an accelerometer uh, calibration. So that's what I'm here to do. Uh, show you how to do an accelerometer calibration. Dead easy, really simple, nothing hard to it. The most important thing is that you have to make sure that the H520 is on an extremely flat surface. The flatter the better. The more flatter it is, check it. Check the ground wherever you're going to do this. Check the table. Check it with a uh, a spirit level if you have one with a wee bubble inside it, and you can check your table and your surface and make sure that it's all nice and level because the most important part of the calibration is going to be the way it sits flat, the way it is now. And that'll be step one of the calibration. Then we will have to tilt it forward, like so. And try and keep it as level uh, as possible. Also that way. The same on the back. And then on the side. On the side. And then finally upside down will be the, the last part. The six sides. or six sides to this type of accelerometer calibration. It's not like the uh, older uh, Unique Typhoon H480. T different type of flight controller in there. Based on uh, PX4. Pixhawk. That sort of thing. Uh, RG Copter, whatever you want to call it, but it's a PX4 based flight controller in there and it requires a six sided calibration so it knows forward, back, left, right, flat, upside down just to, so it knows all that. So it's quite easy to do, very, very simple, there's not much to it. After the firmware update, everything has been reconnected to the ST16S, we're all connected, everything's good to go. We'll stand up to do this. <clears throat> I'm sorry guys, my throat was killing me today. I'm coming down with something. I can feel my throat has been killing me off the morning. My legs are sore, my arms are sore. I'm just, I feel tired, you know what? I get it then again. Overworked and underpaid. That's what the problem is, flipping overworked and underpaid. Right, easy enough, accelerometer calibration. We're into the main screen of the ST16S, so along the top of the screen, for starting from the left, you see the Y for Unique. Uh, you'll see the wee uh, points on the wee wiggly line for going in and setting missions and waypoints and stuff like that, or surveys. Next to that, you get the three little lines. You want to tap the three little lines. And then here now, you get to see a range of different things. There is also a hidden menu in here too, which I'll show you if you want. The three little t lines, tap, 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 tap. Until you get a uh, pop-up warning on the screen, like so. And then you can tap yes. And then you can go into this hidden menu and you can see loads of different parameters. All to do within the flight controller here, the MAV link. You can actually go into it and you can see all the parameters. Set up the PIDs, the speed, everything to do with the flight controller is in here. But unfortunately it's locked out. I would like to make this go faster. It's limited to 30 mile an hour. In GPS mode, I think we need to get that up to 45 minimum. So uh, a wee bit of access, we're locked out at the minute, but uh, hopefully soon we'll be allowed to get access into the flight controller and make some changes because of loads of flight controllers here. I can do APM boards, pick hops and stuff like that. I could do it all myself anyway. But anyway, right. So anyway, in the other screen and this screen too, you'll see a uh, range. You see the compass, you can see the gyroscope, you can see uh, the accelerometer and you can see the level horizon. Don't worry about any other, anything else here other than the accelerometer calibration. 
So you want to start off, make sure the HS5, HS520 is sitting on a nice level surface, no vibration. It, you want it to be nice and still, perfectly still for this calibration. And then I'll run you through step by step almost what to do. So we'll start off and we'll hit the accelerometer button. You get another screen up and it tells you to make sure that you're on a perfectly level surface and you're going to have to calibrate all six sides. Up in the top right hand corner, you can either cancel this or you can hit OK. We're going to hit OK. So we'll hit OK and up comes a range of things. You see it's starting to work at the level now. Then the bottom completed now. It's done the, the flat surface complete. You need to just try and hold it as best we can forward. And it beeps to let you know. So that's the front side. So it's two sides. You do back up. That's three sides done. Go up on the left side and you want to try and hold it as straight as possible. <clears throat> hold it to the right side. Okay, we're nearly done. That's five sides. And then we want to do the last one on the back. Set it down nice and flat. Let it sit there. Putting on a belly again. Doo -doo -doo. And that's it. Calibration is now complete. You can see everything is calibrated. All the sides, all six sides are now complete. And now you're almost ready to go. Not just quite. The way it works is also the camera in these here, the accelerometer and the, the gyro inside the camera works in sync with the accelerometer and gyro and stuff inside the flight controller. Uh, once you have that done then, the next calibration that you want to do is actually, you want to, you want to go general, where are we? I've lost some of the stuff, you want to go down to gimbal and tap gimbal, and once again you want a nice level surface, once you've calibrated the accelerometer on all six sides, you have to go into gimbal, down the side, and then start gimbal calibration, it's very similar to the Typhoon H, it takes about two or three minutes, the camera starts to move left and right and up and down and turns around. And it does its own thing. When it does its own thing, we'll speed all this up. Well, having a pee. Ooh. I think I'm getting fat again. Need to go out for another walk, I think. <clears throat> also, by the way, just if you are doing this gimbal calibration and you plan on using ND filters and stuff like that, if you have the ND filters to hand. Put the ND filter onto the camera before you do the gimbal calibration. That way, whenever it's doing the calibration, it will help allow for the extra load on the camera with the weight of the ND filter on the front of the lens. And it helps it work it all out a wee bit better. <clears throat> of course, if you're going to use a heavier filter on the front, then you're going to have to calibrate it with a heavier filter. It just helps the motors work better. My advice too, uh, can't really show you right at the minute. I have a blob of blue tack, wee blob of blue tack stuck to the back of my camera with a filter on the front there, just sort of to help balance the camera as best as possible with the ND filters on there, just to help balance it, and it stops the wee yap uh, motors working over time. There we go, calibration complete, and we're all done. Set to go. Right, guys, that was it. Hopefully, that wasn't too long. Hopefully, it didn't bore the life clean out of you. Hopefully we'll see you all again. I'm sorry I haven't shown any of you any flight footage. I know I've put a couple of pictures up on the, the Facebook groups. I put a few pictures up. I managed to get a couple of flights with this. And uh, I grabbed a wee bit of video, but it's not worth showing you because it was in auto mode and it's it, it's actually terrible looking. 
not terrible quality, but it's just changing from light to dark and you can see it changing. And ever since then, <clears throat> the weather here in Northern Ireland has been terrible. It's been pushing down every single day. Like I mean pushing down and windy and crap and miserable. And then I've been at work and then it's the dark nights are coming in now. So I just haven't had a chance to go out and fly it and probably enjoy the flipping thing. So hopefully over the weekend coming here, I'll maybe get a chance to get out and fly it. But anyway, that's how to do the accelerometer calibration after you do a firmware update or any time if you're flying in manual mode and it's uh, it's not a windy day and you notice it drifting, maybe left or right without any wind or something like that, maybe you'll have to redo uh, the accelerometer calibration just to help it so it knows where it level is and it will help it to uh, fly much better. Right. All the best guys, thanks for watching, take care, we'll get you again and we'll keep you updated with more uh, as I learn more on the H520, I'll try and keep you uh, posted with uh, some more information on it also. So far I'm loving the machine, brilliant job, needs a bit of work, a wee bit of tweaking, fingers crossed that uh, Unique get it all sorted, I think they're all doing winner. Right, get you again, bye bye. You know better than I do